Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Han. Tonight is the Blue Christmas service. We appreciate you all tuning in. This is unusual. This is not our normal kind of service. It's a very special one night service that we have only once a year, usually around the longest time here, around the 21st or so. And so this is a time where we can come to be in silence, to be somber, to remember. A time when we can, with others, acknowledge the blue feelings we have at Christmas time the reasons for them, and offer them to God. This time has been called the long, dark night of the soul and the winter of our discontent, in which memories of past experiences and the pain of present experiences can become overwhelming. For some, Christmas Day is the most difficult. For others, it may be Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. In this service, we'll have some singing appropriate to the season, recognizing this is not a season of joy for everyone. We'll invite you to reflect on the pain, loneliness, sadness you may feel, and offer to God for healing and transformation. We pray you'll find hope and comfort in knowing that you are not alone. Always remember that God knows your pain and loves you unconditionally. For you, one God, our souls in silence wait. Truly, our hope is in you. Let us pray. God of abundant mercy, you have given us grace to pray with one heart, with one voice. Even though our hearts are broken, our voices tremble with grief and sorrow. Comfort, comfort, Lord, your holy people. Comfort those of us who sit in darkness, mourning underneath sorrow's load. Speak to us of the peace that waits us, of the balm of healing our weary and wounded souls. We ask all this, trusting the promise you have made to hear our prayers where two or three are gathered together in your name of the Holy Child, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's join together now in singing a well-known hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Let's join together now in the readings. The first reading tonight comes from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that the time of service is ended. Look up to the heavens. Who made the stars if not the one who drills them like an army, calling each one by its own name? So mighty is God's power and strength that not one fails to answer. Israel, why then do you complain that our God does not know the troubles or cares your suffering or injustice? Our God, the everlasting God, the creator of the farthest parts of each, never groans tired or weary. No one can fathom the depth of God's understanding. God gives power to the faint and strength to the powerless. They wait upon the Lord and they shall receive a renewed strength. Our psalm tonight is Psalm 141. O Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers, nor eat other sweet foods. Let the righteous strike me, yet my prayers are continually against the deeds of the wicked. Let the rulers be thrown down on the stones that they may hear my words, for they are sweets. Just as one who tills the earth breaks the rock, so let their bones be shattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God, and you I take refuge Strip me not of my life. Guard me from the trap that they have laid before me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I alone pass through. The second reading today comes from Hebrews chapter 10. But recall those earlier days when after you had been enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings sometimes being publicly exposed to abuse and persecution, sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion for those who were in prison, and you cheerfully accepted the plundering of your possessions, knowing that you yourselves possess something better and more lasting. Do not therefore abandon that confidence of yours. It brings a great reward. For you need endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet, 
In a very little while, the one who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. But we are not among those who shrink back and so are lost, but among those who have faith and are saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight's gospel reading comes from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I am in you. They who have been my commandments and keep them are those who love me. Those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will receive yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Why have this service? Why to go to such lengths to actually record, edit, and post a service for Blue Christmas? This isn't our usual happy, joyful, upbeat kind of worship, so why do this? Why put so much effort into something that's so different, that only happens once a year? Well, I'll tell you, it's not for everybody. This service is not for everyone. I, there are many churches, at least some of who do not do this kind of service for good reason. So many churches don't want to sit in sadness. Being part of many different churches, especially in college, I'd see in different denominations, there was a real spirit among churches that was only for the happy. Only have services for uplifting Christ. Only have services for the happy people. Only have services for joy. But what about the other times of year? Many of these churches didn't even do Lent, let alone Advent or Blue Christmas, because it was too dark. The service is not for everyone. The service is not for those who might just think the world's all great, everything's Pollyanna, life is wonderful. That's not what this service is about. This service is a place for those in silence, a place for those in sadness, a place for those who want to remember. This service, this Blue Christmas, is not for everyone. But for those who do need it, we absolutely need it. It's not just something we want to do, but something that we need. Emotionally, spiritually, we need a time and a place to sit still, to stop, to stop from the rush, to stop from the business, to stop from everything going on, and just to breathe. To sit with all the pain and suffering, to sit with all those who've gone before us, to sit in a time and place of silence. We need this so much because so much of the season is the joy, it's the light, wonderful Advent, wonderful Christmas time. We love Christmas. But so much of that light and the business of the season gets in the way. We run ourselves tired. We run ourselves sick even. It's no surprise why I oftentimes get sick on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day because everything going on in church, everything going on in life, it's so much. Baking cookies, getting gifts, wrapping gifts, delivering gifts, shipping gifts, waiting in line at the post office for gifts. All these things build up and up and up. And then there's the Christmas parties and then the family dinners and the seeing hi to friends. It's exhausting. There's a lot going on in this season where so much is happening. And ironically, we talk about the season, talk about being family and slowing down and remembering what's most important. But yet we fill the season with so much more. We fill the season with Advent candles so we can count down to the days that add more excitement to the day. My kids love their Advent can calendars. But we think about all these things that add into the season and we need to stop. We need a break. That's what tonight's about. Tonight is about a time to stop, to be in silence, to break that cycle, 
For some of us, it's the business, but some of it's also the hurt feeling. We give ourselves a place to sit in the feelings away from all the joy and happiness and all the extravagant things. We're not good with this. We're not good in silence. So let's give this a chance. Let's just sit here for just a few seconds with nothing but God. We're not good with silence. I'd even like that long period of silence. You may not as well. We don't like it. We like to do things. We like to talk. We like to be active. We like to do things in our culture. And so to stop, to be in silence, to be in stillness, to just sit with God is really countercultural. It's a wonderful moment though. We need this time because there's so much going on. We need to stop, connect with God. So much what we strive for at church here on Sunday mornings is exactly that to stop and sit with God. But tonight we stop and sit with God in silence for sadness, for grief, for remembrance. We do this service as a time to remember those who are not with us for Christmas. We think about all the times where we may miss them during the year, especially during the holidays, at Thanksgiving, at Christmas, at New Year, and all the other times where we think, oh, I wish so-and-so was here to share it with us. I wonder what they're thinking about. I hope they're watching over us right now. This service is about this time, the sitting, remembering, allowing to be sad, allowing to cry, allowing to feel those emotions that culturally don't happen during this season very much. That's why I like Blue Christmas service. It's unlike anything we hear all year. So much of this time is so much joy and light though, it's nice to sit in that. When we sit here though, it's not just to have a pity party. What we're really doing is we're sitting and we're connecting with God and we're remembering those who came forth and we're touching those feelings and embracing those feelings and in those moments, knowing that we will be comforted because God comforts the people. We heard in the reading today from Isaiah, comfort, comfort my people. God gave those words to the prophet Isaiah to say to Israel, to Jerusalem, after it was destroyed. It was a word given for actually a couple hundred years, about 200 years after the prophet lived. When the destruction would happen and it was going to come, that God wanted the people to know that God was with them, that God was there in that suffering, in the destruction, in the pain, in the grieving. God was there. And God was comforting the people. God gave a comforting word 200 years before it even happened to the people knew for sure, yes, this is exactly what was supposed to happen. God knew this was coming. We were going ahead this way. It was going to happen. And God still comforts us in it. I appreciate those words. Because we need that. We need to hear this as much today as any time. We may not be distant from family and friends. We may not have the connection we don't want. So we need to hear this comforting word from God. That God is with us and sits with us. I like how Isaiah also said, God gives power to the faint and strength to the powerless. In the times of great despair and deep grief and sadness, we think there's no options. We think we can do nothing and so we just sit. 
Have you heard that word tonight? Sit. I've said it probably about 20 times already. We are sitting in this moment. We think we have no power, no comfort, no joy, no anything. And we struggle. But in that moment, in that silence, in that pain, in that grieving, God is with us. That's a point of what Isaiah was saying to the people that God is with us. And so in the season of light and joy, we hear so much of what's going on. We hear Christmas cards. We get letters from friends and family across the country. We see all the joyful things going on, all the wonderfulness, but we don't feel it. Tonight is the time to sit in that feeling, to be in the moment, to hear the readings, to sit in silence, to remember. Because when we are here, we are not alone. When we sit in silence, we are not alone. We gather, as Christ promised, where two or three gathered, Christ is there in our midst. When we sit in the silence, we sit in grief, and we are with God in all the pain, God is with us. God never leaves, nor forsaken, nor abandons us. In the darkest time, right now the night is the longest, the night is dark, but the light grows. And God is with us every day, every step of the way. Every moment, God is with us. Let's be in that moment now. Let's join together in a litany, and after the litany, we will be lighting a candle and hearing a hymn. So after every petition, I will say, wait for the Lord, whose day is near. And we will all say together, wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Let's join together now in this litany of tonight. God, who is with us in this season of looking forward and anticipating the celebration of your son's birth and return in glory, we often find ourselves uncomfortable, uneasy, worried, and sad. The lights and gaiety, the music, the brightness, joy around us often make us unquiet, make us out of step, feeling even more disconnected and different. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. 
take heart. Some of these feelings come from false expectations. Others come from real situations and issues that face us or those we love. Some are from events we may influence and some are beyond our control. Trusting your grace and provision, we name these situations and face the pain and dislocation they cause in us. We claim your promise to companion us in bearing them. We claim your steadfast love for us, knowing you will help us find peace in our troubled spirits. We claim your wise and merciful power that you will meet each need as is best for us. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. God of light and life, we light the candle tonight for all those who struggle with issues involving physical and mental health. We especially remember those who struggle with cancer, depression, thoughts of suicide. May the light of this candle remind us of all the healing available to us in Christ Jesus. Hear our prayers that anguish, and may your good plan fulfill in each of us who suffer. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. We light this candle for those who are struggling with issues involving financial concerns job loss, seeming insurmountable debt. May its light remind us that you are the great provider. You will give us our daily bread. Empower us to take steps we need to solve these problems. Draw us to the right people and programs to help us. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. We light this candle for all those who grieve. You know our deepest need. You understand our pain, our lost dreams, our lost opportunities, and the separation caused by death. May this light remind us that we are not orphaned. We are not alone. Grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow we may find hope, in death we may find resurrection. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. We light this candle for all those who wrestle with the change of addiction. Help us to name that which enslaves us and face it, whether it be food, alcohol, drugs, pornography, shopping, escapism, self-medication, and self-abuse in all its forms. May this candle bring your light to those secret hidden places and not-so-secret activities of imprisonment. Hear our prayers for deliverance and freedom. Help us and those we love break the hold of these evils. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord. Be strong take heart. We light this candle tonight for all those who are victims of violence in any form. May its light lead us to peace, safety, and truth. Pour forth encouragement to claim your help in healing physically and spiritually, to trust in your justice, to find assistance, to resist blaming ourselves or others to be confident in the future you have planned for us, a future full of hope. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. We light this candle tonight for all those who are experiencing the pain of broken relationships with family, children, spouses, and friends. May its light remind us of pure communion you desire for all creation. Our desire for the same communion makes estrangement so painful. Lead us to relinquish and hold the broken relationships have on us. 
to forgive ourselves for our contribution to the breach, to forgive those who have hurt us, to take the steps to mend that relationship. If possible, Lord, we know that sometimes we suffer from a broken relationship with someone who is now dead. Though we cannot meet them on this side of the grave, help us prayerfully to examine, receive, and extend forgiveness in that situation that we may live again. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. We light this candle tonight for all those suffering from the effects of war, famine, disease. May this light remind us that your holy calling to everyone who believes that you are the light of the world, change hearts of all who resort to violence, who seek vengeance, Protect those who find themselves far away from home and serving their nation or anyone in need. We know you are in the midst of those in anguish and pray that your wonderful healing presence will be seen, felt, embraced. Reveal to us how to join in your saving work, to make needed gifts to alleviate suffering, to support those on the front lines, and to anyone facing disaster to pray for unceasingly for peace in our families, our neighborhoods, and the world. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. We light this candle for all those who are estranged from you, who are besieged with doubts, who are overwhelmed by the world and do not claim your presence in any corner of their life. We pray for them and therefore ourselves, for we confess that each of us knows this condition. Lord, may the light of your love lead us all to you and to your home. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. We ask for all these things in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As we go to hear the hymn now, I invite you to at home if you like to light a candle and remember to wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart.
Lord, remember your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now a blessing. My friends, life is short. We do not have as much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love and make haste to do kindness and the blessing of God, which comes to all of us. Saving grace, life-giving spirit be upon you and all whom you love and pray for this day, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.